Redlands, California. We welcome all of you who are here. Those who have come out, some people have come from a long way. Those who are here, those who are watching live, we're so blessed that you're here. We're so blessed that you have joined us. We have come to give Jesus Christ the glory. We have come to lift up the name of the Father. We have come to do the will of the Holy Spirit. We declare revival is now. Hallelujah. Let's worship, let's worship, let's worship.
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Angels are all around us here. They've encircled us as they've heard the praise. They come to the sound of worship. They come to the sound of the name of Jesus. This is a moment. Spirits kiss. Heaven meets her. Spirit, who is the Lord? 
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We thank, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory, 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 glory. glory. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. in a mighty way. Oh, in a powerful way. Hallelujah. Whatever you need from him, he will be for you. Hallelujah. He will answer. He will save. He will supply. He will provide. He will heal. He will transform. He will renew. He will restore. That's what Jesus came for. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I hope you guys are all excited to be here too. Welcome. Thank you for coming out to the park on this beautiful sunny Saturday. Yes. A little bit different than it was last time. <laughs> Woo. Praise God. Last time we just got baptized, huh? <laughs> God is so good. God is so good. Well, I'm Pastor Heather co-pastor with my husband, Pastor Larry. We're a team, we're a duo, we're the dynamic duo, a tag team at True Grace Church in Redlands, here in this beautiful city of Redlands. This is my hometown, technically, Yukaipa, but this is my hometown where I grew up. And uh, God is moving in this place, and he said, come to this park where I grew up as a little girl, playing here, out in the outfield of the softball field, so there's angels in the outfield, just to let you know that. Um, and so I'm so excited to see revival in my city, and revival in your city, and revival where you live. You can declare what God declares over your life, and over your city, over your region. Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. This is God's nation. This is God's world. And he's given it to us. Hallelujah. So today I just want to bring a message to you um, that's going to really, really encourage you. Hallelujah. And it is, what is the true gospel? What is the true gospel? Not everybody knows the answer to that. Even Christians. Even people who've been saved a long time and have known Jesus a long time and pray and read the Bible, gone to church and gone out on mission trips and got a lot of things. They don't really know what is the true gospel. Well, it's really simple. It's the news that's too good to be true. It's too good to be true, but it is true. It is true. You know, there wasn't even a word in the Greek language for that word. So because they had never known a, a word that said too good to be true. Something that you would have been taught in our, in our society, if something's too good to be true, it's not, right? Right? If you've been told that, you know, if you, something's too good to be true on a business deal or whatever they say, it's probably not them. So it's always suspicious. But you know what? Jesus says, I am the gospel. And my love through my father is too good to be true but it is true hallelujah so i just want to share with you some things that are really going to be strong strong pillars in your life and keys of revelation that you and i need to do what god's called us to do because we're not just to be occupied till i come just like sit sit on your rapture rug and wait for jesus to come and, you know, the whole world can, like, go to hell in a handbag. That is not our calling. Jesus yeah. preached the kingdom. Yeah. Go out and preach the kingdom. Don't quit. Don't give up. The pizza party comes after the game. Yeah. Right? Come on now. We're having the pizza party after the first quarter. We're going to have that party afterwards. Our wedding feast is after we have finished the race, fought the good fight of faith. Come on. Yeah. We're so excited about this. I'm so excited. And as you believe this, energy will come up inside of you. Strength will come up inside of you. Yeah. 
God satisfies your mouth with good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hey, hallelujah. 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 So key number one, Jesus came to restore us back to God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good news, right? Yeah. Jesus came to restore us back to God. In Colossians 1.19, it says, For God is satisfied to have all his fullness dwelling in Christ. And by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is brought back to himself, back to its original intent, restored to innocence again. Hallelujah. So that's what Jesus has been sent to do, and he accomplished his mission. He fulfilled what the Father told him to do. He had an assignment. He knew the assignment, and he finished his assignment. He came to restore us back to the Father from the fall. All had fallen, all had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news is the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus, Paul writes this so beautiful that God is satisfied to have all of his fullness dwelling in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So God put all of his fullness in his son and sent him to earth and by the blood of his cross. Hallelujah. See, you were paid the highest price. You and I were redeemed, not with silver or gold, but with the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, is there another love you can find greater than that love? Hallelujah. That's how much you mean to the Father. That's how much you mean to the Son. That's how much you mean to the Holy Spirit. See, we couldn't even get the Holy Spirit until Jesus did what he did. And so it says, everything in heaven and earth is now brought back to himself. Back to its original intent. God finishes what he starts. God is finishing what he started in your life. He didn't walk off the job. He didn't throw down the tools and say, this is too hard for me. He didn't say, I'm done. Lunchtime, Hallelujah. quitting time, five o'clock. I heard the whistle blow. No, the Lord says, I who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it, to bring it to its completion. And the completion is always good because with God, it's always a good ending in Christ. And it says, restored to innocence again. You may feel like you've lost your innocence. Many people have felt like they lost their innocence. It was stolen. It was lost. It was taken. It was ravaged by the enemy. But the Lord says, I have the power through my son to restore you to innocence again. Praise God. That's the news of the gospel. Number two, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Who is our arch enemy? Yeah. The accuser of the brethren. All the works of the Satan. The accuser of the brethren. The one who has come to steal, kill, and destroy mankind. He hates us. He hates God. He hates everything that is God, everything that is of God, everything that is good. And he is an enemy. He is our arch enemy. And he has in his military, if you will, he has in his military force fallen angels, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And so you say, wow, no wonder things are, are looking bad on this planet. Yeah, because he's the little G God of this world, the world system. Anything the devil touches falls apart because he is fallen. He can't do anything that succeeds. The only time he could do anything that succeeds for a little bit is if we come into agreement with him. But, but we can come and stand in what Jesus did. It says Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. See, God has works and the devil has works. The devil always imitates God because he can't do anything of his own. 
He's not an originator of anything except iniquity. So he has to copy God. He's the antithesis of God. He's just the opposite. It says in 1 John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. Praise God. Amen. In individual lives, as well as in regions and areas and cities and this whole planet. So if Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, I'm going to partner with Jesus. Because I'm about destroying the works of the devil. Because the devil has got his wicked, filthy, rotten fingers in everything he possibly can, even in the church. For many years, 2,000 years almost, he has effectively pulled things out of the church. One of the first things he pulled out was salvation by grace. Yep. But Paul says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For it is by grace that you are saved through faith. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. Because the fallen man wants to do works to get to God because that's the enemy's system. But Jesus said there's one way to God, me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that we go to, and in him we are now placed into the Father. Hallelujah. So it says the Son of God was revealed to undo and destroy. I love that. It's one thing to undo, but to destroy? I love it. It says there's a scripture in Isaiah. It says... Um, the anointing destroys the yokes. Doesn't just remove it. Doesn't just remove it. If you're a prisoner and you've been shackled and someone comes and unlocks the chains and throws them on the ground, every time you look at the chains, you're going to remember, that's where I was. That's what, I, that's what was tied up on me. But the anointing does even more than that. Destroys them. It destroys Hallelujah. the yokes, the things that we were yoked to in the spirit realm. Because we were tied, we were all tied to the fall of Adam. So that's what Jesus came to do, okay? He restore us back to God, destroy the works of the devil. And here's another one. Jesus came to do good and to heal all who are oppressed of the devil. You know, Jesus is still healing today. And he's healing in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. There's not a person on this planet Jesus doesn't want to heal. You might not hear that in every church, but there is not a person on this planet that Jesus doesn't want to heal. There's not a person on this planet he doesn't want to save. There's not a person on this planet he doesn't want to deliver. There's not a person on this planet he doesn't want to have a relationship with. Everyone, anyone can come and receive, receive his power. He's working now in the revival that's now. We're going to see all the works of Jesus happening again in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see it happen. Already. It says in Acts 10, 38, Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and with great power. He did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny and oppression of the devil. For it is God who anointed him. The anointing is the power of God to work it's just not the power of God to sit on a throne. It's the power of God Hallelujah. to work in your life. It's the power of God to remove those things that have held you back, to take off those chains, to take off that bondage, to yes. remove depression, anxiety, fear, to take off sickness and disease, 
family generational curses to set you free. Jesus said we are called to do that too. We are called to go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we're doing out here at the park today. That's what the church forgot. We were called to do that. Hallelujah. The church is called to go out into the world. Not to hide behind four walls. Not to have ushers who remove people who get unruly. But to cast the demon out of the person so they could stay. Recently I heard of a man who went to a church. And the man had a demons in him. And the man began to manifest. And you say, well, what does manifest mean? Manifest means the demons began to show themselves. He began to cuss. He began to yell. He began to act like a fool, right? That's what demons do. They're fools. And they and they begin to manifest in, in this man, right? In the church service. Well, he happened to be in a church that didn't walk in any power or any anointing. So what did they do? Ushers. Ushers. The ushers were called, and it took four men to carry this man out. They carried the man out. They called 911. He got sent to a 72-hour lockup at a behavioral health, and they went on about their service. No. No. If you're a fireman, you've got a hose, you got water, and there's a fire, what do you do? Put out the fire. Come on now. Come on now. What happened to the church? Didn't Jesus tell us in Mark 16, these are the signs that will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. Number one. How did we not see that uh, veil? Hey, we see it now. The veil's been lifted. Number two things. They're going to speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. They're going to take up snakes. Woo! That doesn't mean you hold a snake in church and go, look, it doesn't bite me. Yeah, if you do that, you be talk to Jesus about that. Okay, Paul never did need, need to do that. He shook the thing off into the fire. He didn't grab the snake and say, look at me. But see, we trample on serpents and scorpions and all overall power of the enemy. That's what the church needs to be doing in the power of God. So instead of casting the man out of the church with the demon still in him, why don't we just cast the demon out of the man or the woman and let them come to know the love of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm ready for that. Oh, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. We do not need to be years and years of counseling. We do not need to continue to go to psychiatrists and work through all of our issues over and over and over again. We can receive the power of God and be set free from depression. It is a spirit. The Bible calls it a spirit. Let's not change what the Bible says. Let's not change what the Father says. Let's not change what Jesus said. It's called a spirit of heaviness. I don't care how many pills you take. I don't care how much meth you smoke. I don't care what you go do, how many vacations you go on. You cannot get the spirit of heaviness off of you until you get set free. But when you're set free, you're happy. You go from heaviness to happiness. You're like, Heather, I've never seen that. Revival is now. It's happening. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Praise God. So there's another key. There's another key. Jesus came to make us new creations in him. Jesus didn't come to fix bad people and make them good. Religion does that. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Stop. Stop wearing those clothes. Stop speaking like that, that kind of language. Stop that. Then you can become one of us. That's, that's religion. That's outward change. Jesus said to the Pharisees and the religious leaders, he says, you know what? On the outside, you look really good. But inside, you're dead. You're a whitewashed tomb filled with dead men's bones. And you can't give life to anybody in religion. So am I saying you should go out and start drinking and smoking and cussing? And No. 
But I'm saying, if you just cut off the weed, what's go, what's still down in the ground? Just be made new. Just be made new. Jesus came to make dead people live. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the truth. He made, come to make dead people live. I was dead in my sins and trespasses. I was dead in Adam. I was dead even before I was born from my mother's womb. I was dead. I came through a womb of a woman who was unregenerate in Christ. I had to be born through the womb of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, a religious leader who should have known these things. In John 3.3, 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. You won't even see it. You won't see it. But Jesus says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any person is in Christ, woo, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old moral previous spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new thing has come. Glory. Glory to God. What are we new now? We are in Christ. We're supposed to do the things that Christ did. We're supposed to think like Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have the heart of the Father. Even our bodies are renewed. Our bodies are renewed in Christ. Everything is new in Jesus. Yes. So we're not Hallelujah. like part of the time of the dead. And then when we go to church, we're in the new. And then we drive out of the parking lot and we're the old. No. No. You truly are placed into Christ. I'm in Christ who's in the Father. I have been given the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had. Yes. That Jesus has when he walked on the earth. Yes. He walked as a man, as a woman. He walked as a human being. What he did, he did not as the Son of God. He only called himself the Son of Man most of the time. He did it as a spirit-filled believer. So everything he did, I can do, and so can you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's another key. Hallelujah. So here's another one. Jesus came to give us back. Everything that we lost to the enemy. Amen. Oh, have you lost a few things to yes. the devil? Yes. Have you lost years? Yes. Have you lost happy times? Yes. Have you lost beautiful family relationships? Yes. Have you lost things to the enemy where he has come to steal, kill, and destroy? Yes. Have you lost your health? Some people have lost their mind to the devil. He spares nobody. He hates every single one of us equally. And he is here on this earth for one reason. To steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I came. I came. John 10.10. 10, the thief. That's what the devil's called. He does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's three ugly things. See, the devil has stolen things from you that you think you will never get back. And he's also the father of lies. Because Jesus says, I will restore the years the locusts have eaten. But Lord, you know what? I'm in my, I'm in my 40s, my 50s, my 60s, my 70s. How could you get back that time? The Lord says, I don't wear a watch. That's right. I'm not limited to things on this earth in the natural. I can give you things you know nothing about. I can give you my food from heaven that will renew your youth. That will fix your mind. That will renew your heart. That will mend the broken heart that you've been carrying for years. He says, that's what I want to do. Jesus said, I have come so that they may have life life that's what the gospel is it's life it's life for the dead it's new life and that they may have it what more 
abundantly till it overflows. Amen. What did David say when he was sitting with the Lord in the presence of the enemy? You anoint my head with the oil. And my cup you barely fill. No. no. You gave me just a little dab. No. One sip. No. He's like, well, Lord, it's overflowing. He goes, I know. Yes. I'm going to keep on pouring. Drink. Oh, oh, woo! I feel all you have inside of you is life. It's called the new wine. It's called the new wine. From the true vine. It's the new wine of his love, of his grace, of his mercy. Drink and then drink and drink some more. Have as much as you want. It will never run out. What did Jesus tell the woman at the well? Oh, if you'd have known who I was. Honey, you would have asked for me. And I would have given you living water. That when you drink of it, you will never thirst again. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Once you drink of Jesus, you don't need to go into any other loves. You don't need to go find somebody else. You don't need to go to some mountain top and talk to a guru. You don't have to find something to do to fix you. Jesus gives you that new wine. Yes. Praise God. He is the new wine. Okay, so I'm giving you the pillars of what is the true gospel. Jesus also came to restore our righteousness through his own sacrifice. The word righteousness is a word that can really be twisted in religion. And in religion, what I was taught is that righteousness comes by your good works. <laughs> righteousness comes when you stop at every stop sign, uh, drive the speed limit, go to church when you're supposed to be there, um, come early, stay late. You know, be at the altar, do a lot of crying at the altar, make sure the pastor sees you. Um, you know, uh, give, give lots of tithes and offerings. Like, that's going to make you righteous. That's what religion taught me. And the devil wanted me to believe that because I could never measure up that way. Come on. Does, does that make sense to you? Yes. Because as long as you try to become righteous by your works, it now becomes a debt, and now you owe God. What? The Lord goes, if you want to work it off, you want to try to work for your righteousness, it now becomes sin that you're working for my righteousness. Because you're going like this to my son. Oh, Lord. So what do I do? Well, we're going to get righteousness through Jesus Christ. Romans 5:17. Woo, you should memorize this one in your heart. Write it on your heart. For if by one man's sin, that's Adam, death reigned through that one man. Much more, those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, it's a gift. Can you receive a gift? Yes. Oh, no, Lord, I, 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 can't, I, I can't take that. I've been working so hard here. I know I just want to give it to you. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll work it. I'll make you proud of me, God. But we'll just take it. But no, 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 no. I... He says, honey, there's only one way. There's only one way. Come on, there's room at the cross for you. Come on, come on. Just take it. Just take it. How much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will now reign in life. See, we lost our position through Adam, but now we can reign with Christ through the one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're giving this revelation to all who are hearing. God is giving you revelation as you're hearing that. As you hear that, uh, revelation is coming right now. It's coming into your heart. You're like, wait a minute, I never heard that scripture. But that scripture is the heart of God. So when anybody says to you, how do I become righteous? Receive the free gift. Yes. Through grace. That's the gospel. It's yours for the taking. Come sit at the table. You didn't buy the food. You didn't cook it. You didn't pay the price. Your blood couldn't have made you righteous. Your own blood could have made you righteous. Even if you laid down your life for God, and many have, it didn't make them righteous. They were righteous by Jesus' blood. Yes. 
And because of Jesus' blood, they did righteous things for God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's another key. Here's another one. Jesus came to give us back the peace, the position, and the power that we had before the fall of man. Jesus came to bring us and give us back the peace, the position, and the power that we had before the fall of man. John 14, 27. Jesus said to his beautiful, lovely disciples that he now calls friends. He says, I leave the gift of peace with you. My peace. Oh. Not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. So don't yield to fear and don't be troubled in your hearts, but be courageous. You know, peace gives you courage. When you have peace with God, you're not scared of anything man can do. You're not scared of the enemy. You don't worry if they go back into your history and say, yeah, but I knew this is what she used to do. Because you are telling your story. You're telling your testimony. You're saying, I know where I came from, but that, that person doesn't even exist anymore. You're talking about a dead woman. You're talking about a dead man. I'm alive in Christ forevermore. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. He left his peace with us. It's not something we have to go and buy. It's not something we can give from the world. The world the world has all kinds of ways they want to try to give you peace. But it's not real. It's fragile. It's fleeting. It's not lasting. It won't go all the way in and bring wholeness. See, we can look at some of these trees around us, and some of these trees are 100 years old. Some of these oak trees are 100 years old, and some of them might look really good on the outside, but you know what? There could be rottenness on the inside we wouldn't even know about until one day, boom, that thing goes down. You're like, oh my gosh, it really looked good. Even the leaves were green, but it just fell over. See, that's the kind of peace the world gives. The world gives peace that looks good on the outside. You know, uh, uh, social media is a real mask sometimes right here I am you know here's a good here's the best way to take a picture face the sun you know and pooch out your lips and suck in your stomach and you know put your hand back over here and it's like we want to portray to the world that we're living the good life we take pictures on a vacation right we don't take pictures when we're cleaning the toilets we take pictures, look what I went and did, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. But what about the times when you're crying by, in your room, you're going, God, I need help. Nobody takes those kind of pictures. But the Lord says, I give you my peace that's there when, you, when, the, when it looks like everything, the bottom just dropped out. My peace is power. Yep. And then he also came to give you a position. What is your position in Christ? Ephesians chapter 2. These are things we should all know. I'm not quizzing you. I'm giving you information. I'm giving you revelation. The position in Christ is Ephesians chapter 2. We actually share his position. That's blasphemy. No, it's not. It's not blasphemy. It's exactly what Jesus intended to do yes. when he raised us from the dead. Hallelujah. He didn't intend to make us uh, uh, foot washers in heaven. He intended to have a bride seated on the throne with he and his father. Hallelujah. That's the father's plan. The father says, I made mankind because I want them to be with me. I want them to reign with me. I want them to be in my image and my likeness. I want them to be carriers of my own spirit. But when man fell, they couldn't carry the spirit anymore. So we had to bring a new man on the scene. That's what Jesus is called, the second Adam. So in Ephesians 2, 6, it says... He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. Who did? The Father. The Father raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. And he raised us up too yes. with him. Christ, the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glory of perfection. Well, I'm not perfect. Yes, you are. In Christ, you are. 
Yeah, but nobody in Christ you are. Why would you see yourself outside of Christ at any time of the day? At any time, day or night, you are never to see yourself outside of Christ. Never. Because you can never be outside of Christ once you've been put into him. It says he ascended with him. We ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Woo! We are co-seated as one with Christ. Hey. That's where you dwell. Hallelujah. That's where I dwell. Right. There shouldn't even be division among us. We're all seated with Christ. There's not little squares like a waffle iron in heaven. And everybody, well, I'm in my square, but you're in your square. And this church doesn't do anything with this church. And we're offended at you. No. If we're in Christ, we're in Christ. Amen. Be one. Be one. Be seated yeah. on the throne. So that's our new position. Yeah. And then he gave us his power. These are amazing keys. He gave us his power. What is his power? The one who is, they call, the third person of the Trinity. Sounds like it's a rank, right? Holy Spirit's not low. He's high. He's the very Spirit of God. Hallelujah. He's the Spirit of God. It even says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, we are renewed or we are transformed by the Spirit who is the Lord. you got to read that. So let's not just say, well, Holy Spirit's a little, you know, off. He's, he's an afterthought. Absolutely not. Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit, anointed with the Holy Spirit, and says, I need to send you out with the same Holy Spirit that I have Amen. so that you could do the works that I did. He yeah. didn't give us the Holy Spirit to go sit on the beach, <laughs> although we could do that. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we could come against all the power of the enemy. Amen. Woo! Amen. You're warriors. Hey. You are warriors. You might have only had R and R, rest and relaxation. You might have said, "I don't, I didn't even know I was in boot camp." When well, the Lord says you're warriors, just like Gideon, valiant warrior, threshing the wheat in the wine press, hiding, valiant warriors. You are valiant warriors. It says in Acts 1.10, Jesus says, I promise you this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Yes. He will. Yes. He knows his assignment. The Father knows his assignment. Jesus knows his assignment. The Holy Spirit knows his assignment. They're not confused about their assignment. Hallelujah. Right. They're not having to look at the regs and go, well, what are we supposed to do again? What are the rules in the regs? They know exactly what their calling is. To empower every believer. He will come upon you and you will be seized with power. Yes. How many of you have used your power? Not like I want to. I mean like you've got like an entire energy, nuclear energy plant inside of you. That's right. Yeah. And you're lighting up a little light bulb and the church goes, don't do anything more. You're going to draw attention to yourself. Oh, come on. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's right. The devil doesn't want you drawing attention to Jesus. That's right. He said, just this the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Just hold a little birthday candle. The birthday candle, the devil's going to blow it out. You're going to have nothing. You're going to be standing there in the dark. Sick, broke, disgusted. No, what happened? The Lord goes, you're a nuclear power plant because yes. I know who I put inside of you. Yes. God is not confused Ooh. about who he put inside of us. Amen. Himself, his very spirit. You will be seized Glory. with power. You will be. Not you could be. You might be. If you go to Bible college, if you know enough Hebrew and Greek, if you can quote enough scripture, you might be my messenger. No. They didn't even have a Bible when Peter came out of the upper room. What right. Bible did he have in his hand? Nothing. But he had power. Amen. And he spent three and a half years with Jesus. He had the word. That's Jesus' name. The word of God. Right. He had the word inside of him. That's right. And when he came out with the power of God, the word came out of him. Yes, Lord. He didn't open up a Bible and go, would you please turn to um, Leviticus chapter 3 and we're going to read about the, the uh, rules of what, how not to eat pork. He didn't say anything like that. Yeah. He says, man, of Jerusalem. And he began to preach the gospel. Yes. He began to tell them all about Jesus. Hallelujah. He unveiled to them the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He told them about God's love. God's love. The 
father's love. Amen. You will be my messengers to Jerusalem, this little area, Judea, larger area, and even the distant provinces, even to the remotest parts of the earth. By the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. That's how you're going to do life. That's how I'm going to do life. Awesome. Use that nuclear power plant yeah. on the inside of you. Yeah. Speak Hallelujah. to these things. Tell the demons, get, get out of Red Lynx. That's right. We serve you notice. We serve notice. The demons are going to leave this area because right. the people are going to get filled. Because right. the children of God are going to go about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the Amen. devil. We don't need to have an airplane flying over the city of Redlands on a, on a speaker going, demons leave. All we need to do is get people filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. We'll go. We'll go. We'll lay hands on the sick. We'll cast out demons. And we'll be advertisements for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Another one. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of sin, sickness, and corruption. Well, Heather, everybody in my family's had cancer, and they've all, all the women have died from breast cancer, so I'm sure I'm going to get it. I don't even know of a, a, of a Hollywood actress who went and had a double mastectomy because she just figured, you know what, everybody in my family's had breast cancer. I'll just go take care of it now. Oh, come on. Look the world. Well, why do we accept these things from the devil? We don't have to take anything the devil serves. That's right. You go to a restaurant and you order tacos and they bring out enchiladas, you're going to say, I ordered tacos, please send them back. I want tacos. The devil puts poop on your plate. You say, get it out of here. I'm not right. taking anything from you. I'm not taking your lies. I'm not taking your accusation. I will not take your condemnation, your guilt, or your shame. Amen. That's right. I'm a new creature in Christ. Hey, yeah, and these are things we have to say in our prayer closet. That's right. Not just preach up here. We have That's to say right. it in our prayer closet. Yes. We have to say it when the when the heat is on. That's right. We have to say it like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego hey. when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Right. We will not bow, O King. Yes. We will not bow to your idol. We will not bow to fear. We will not bow to fear. Our God will save us, but if he doesn't, of God in Christ Jesus. There's an old hymn that says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. The curse has been removed from your life. I don't care how many witches, I don't care how many psychics, I don't care how many haters you have, I don't care how many people who say they're Christians that curse you. They have no power over you because Amen. Jesus became a curse for you. Amen. Devil, get behind me. That's right. I'm blessed. Cursed 
means empowered to fail. But I'm blessed. You're blessed. Thank you, Lord. Who God is blessed is blessed. Yes. Blessed means empowered to prosper. Yes. Hallelujah. We're empowered to prosper. Glory to God through Jesus. And there's another one here, another one. Jesus came to show us the Father and to send us the Holy Spirit so we could walk in the same kingdom, authority, and power he has. In John 14, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and it will satisfy us. Jesus said, have I been with you this long? You don't know who I am? You don't know me? If you've seen me, you have seen my Father. Wow. I and my Father are one. I'm not preaching oneness doctrine right here. Don't go into that. I'm saying they are one. Now here's the next one. We should be the mirror image of Jesus. So when people say, could you show me Jesus? You don't even need to open your Bible yet. Oh yeah, that's where the church is going. I know. I know. If you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. That's blasphemy. No, it's not. Not in the context that I'm preaching. Praise God. Jesus, did, did, did God say, let us make man in our image and in our likeness? That's right. You and I should radiate such love of God such miracle working power, such authority, such grace, so one with the kingdom that when people meet us, we can say, if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. Amen. Come on now. Jesus didn't just say this stuff so, so he could be quoted 2,000 years later. He said it so we could lay hold of it ourselves. Everything he did was for, for a reason. There's nothing in the Bible by accident. There's nothing Jesus did by accident. Now it says in 1 John 4, 17. Hope you could lay hold of this. Cats, you ready? Get your, get your catcher's mitts out. You ready? Yep. Come on. Love has been perfected among us in this. Yeah. In what? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Judgment. We're not going to be scared and trying to hide underneath the throne. We're going to stand. And we're going to judge angels. We're going to tell all the hordes of hell, go to hell. You who deceive the nations. That's right. And we're going to be judged righteous because we trusted in God. And then here it goes. Because. Are you ready? What's after the comma? Yep. Because. I tell you, I never heard this, this scripture in all the years I was in religion. The devil doesn't want you to know a lot of scriptures. Just let me tell you that. He tries to hide them, right? Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Yes, hallelujah. Why are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Hallelujah. As Jesus is, so are we in this That's world, right. so that way we don't have to be scared in the judgment. That's right. Why? Because we're just full of God. We're full of God's love. We're full of His power. We're full of authority, peace, the position. We know who we are. We understand our assignment. We know what's been written about us, Hallelujah. but we're just fulfilling it. Yes. Yep. God's got you in a diary. Yes. He's got a diary about you, oh. and there's nothing negative in it. Thank you, Lord. If you, if you go on a little negative, Jack, he just holds pause. Resume. And she came back to me. And oh, she began hallelujah. to worship me again. And yeah. she called on my name again. That's and right. it just, just catches up right there. Thank God has the ability to say, law, pause. Yes, 
pause. Hallelujah. You might say, I've been pause on de two decades. God goes, 20 years is nothing to me. A blip. Right. But you don't want to go 20 years. You don't want to go 20 minutes. That's right. So now, how do we bring glory to God? How do we bring glory to God? We believe in Jesus. We believe in operating in kingdom authority and power that he gave us. Jesus tells a parable of three men who were given talents, giftings and anointings. To one man he gave five talents, five gifts, five anointings. You say money, whatever. I think it's a lot of things. To another man he gave three, four women, and to another he gave one. That's how God, that's how God wants to do it. He says, I'm gonna go on a journey and I'll be back. I'm gonna see what, what you did with what I gave you. So when the master came back, he called the three servants to him. He says, So what have you been doing? Well, the one that got five said, oh, master, thank you. Thank you for the five. Oh, my goodness. It was the most amazing life I've ever lived. I used the five, and, and I doubled it. Now I have ten. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. He said, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a little. You'll be ruler over much. The next one came who'd been given three. He says, so what have you done? He says, what? you gave me three. Oh my gosh, I was so happy to get three. It was just amazing. Those three talents, those three gifts, the anointing you gave me was amazing. I doubled it. Woo I doubled it for you. Here you go, Lord. He says, ah, oh, that's my child. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a little, you will be entrusted with much. And the one who had been given one, he says, come on up here, come on, come here. He said, so what did you do with the, with the one I gave you? The one who got one. He said, I knew you were a hard man. Expecting to reap a harvest where you didn't sow. Things changed. The whole scene in that room changed right there. Yeah. What? I'm sure the other two were looking like, well, what is he talking about? Yeah, you're a hard man. Hard to please you. So I figured if I use that gift, that talent, that anointing, that ability that you gave me, and I lost it, you come back and beat me. Because you're a hard man. You're a hard taskmaster. So I just went and buried it in the ground. Here it is, just like you gave it to me. I put it in a grave. I put it in a grave. Here's your talent back. And the Lord took the talent from that one man, that anointing, the gifts. And he gave it to the man with ten. He says, this is for you. You're going to be ruler over 10 cities. You had no idea the reward that was coming. Every single one of you were going to get a reward. Because you trusted in my love. Because I gave you something that was literally my own power. But he called the one an unfaithful and wicked servant. He said, take it away from him and take him away from me. That's horrible. So what are you doing with what God gave you? Are you disqualifying yourself because the devil says you can't do that? You can't even hold it together for 24 hours. You still, you're still smoking. You're still going here. You still got this person on hold. You're still hooking up over here you know, every couple months. No, you, you're not qualified. The Lord says, I will free you from every yoke and everything that has enslaved you. Trust my love. Be faithful. 
Be faithful, for the time is coming when I am going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? So we don't have to be the one. We could be the one with the three or the five. Praise God. So how do we glory? How do we give God glory? John 14, 12. Jesus says, I tell you this timeless truth. The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do. Even greater, even greater miracles than these because I go to be with my Father. And I will do whatever you ask me to do when you ask me in my name. That's how the Son will show what the Father is really like and bring glory to Him. When we walk in authority and power and trusting Jesus, we bring glory to the Father. Amen. We bring glory to God when we simply trust Him with, as children and say, I'm going to go do what you said I could do. Hallelujah. I'm going to go over those points real quick. Jesus came to restore us back to God. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to do good and heal all who were oppressed by the devil. Jesus came to make us new creations in him. Jesus came to give us back everything we lost to the enemy. Jesus came to restore righteousness through his own sacrifice. Jesus came to give us back the peace, the position, and the power that we lost in the fall of man. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of sin, sickness, and corruption. And Jesus came to show us the Father and send us the Holy Spirit so we can walk in the same kingdom authority and power that he has. You don't have to be lost. You don't have to be oppressed. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to suffer under the hand of Satan that accuses you. You can live as a free, born-again, spirit-filled, powerful child of God for the rest of your life on earth, and you can live eternally. Revival is now. It's not going to be. Revival is now. A 60-year-old woman standing in the park preaching with a sound system. Declaring the glory of God. Praising God. And you hear. You hear. You said there's just a handful. It doesn't matter. Jesus turned the world upside down with his 12 disciples. Glory to God. Never despise the day of small beginnings. Everything starts as a seed. Satan has been defeated. Cast him out of your life. Cast him out of your life. It's the anointing that destroys the yokes and removes the burdens. Now is the time for you to receive. Hallelujah. Everybody would like to stand up, please. Praise God. Praise God. Now is the time to receive. You can come up, come around, around here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now is the time, right now, right now at this moment. The Lord says, I want to give you things that you've never had before. Hallelujah. If you want the sun to your back, you could stand here. We can move the camera. If you, want the, if you don't want the sun in your face, you could stand right over here if you want. Jesus said, I have come. I have sent my children. I've sent my messengers. I know that I have been given gifts and callings of God. I know that I'm part of the fivefold ministry. I know that I'm here on a mission. I know that I'm here to display God's power to you so you can be free. So you can live the way Jesus intended you to live. No good parent wants their children in a prison. No good parent wants their children under tyranny and oppression. No good parent will put their child in solitary confinement and let them be abused by a tormentor. No good parent. You have a good, good father. And the anointing of God is here right now 
to do mighty and powerful things in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. If I just declare over you right now, I come, in, come against all power of the enemy now in Jesus' name. I break the power of every demonic activity, yes. every demonic spirit yes. that's been operating in your life. Thank you, Lord. All spirits that have held you captive, held you back, held you down, disqualified you, discounted you, yes. corrupted you, yes. hurt you, tormented you. I command all of that to leave now in the Thank name of Lord. Jesus. Yes. God's power to you right now. Yes, God's power to set you free. God's you, power for you to come yes. out and to be who he's created you to be. I release to you the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power of the love of Jesus, the power of God's grace right now. Hallelujah. If you have not experienced speaking in tongues, the prayer language of the Holy Spirit, the prayer language is for every believer. I want you to come up here right now if you want that. If you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, come. Come and receive. As you pray in the Spirit, it's your spirit praying, not your soul, not your mind, not your brain. It's the Spirit. Those of you who pray in the Spirit, just pray right now in the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Did anybody come today who wants to renounce anything in their life? Anything in your life that's held you back? If you've come for deliverance, if you've come for healing, come up right now. Come right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You said you were disabled? Yes. Okay. And, and what is that disability? Do you want to share that? I have to ask my She has trouble communicating? Yes. Because of a... Um, okay. Because of a traumatic brain injury she had as an accident how long ago? God. Yvette, God wants to heal you today. <laughs> he wants to do a mighty work in your life. He wants to touch you and give you an encounter in a way that you've never had before. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I take authority over all power of the enemy. I speak God's healing power over you right now. I speak God's healing over your brain and your memory and over all the side effects of that car accident and that brain injury 20 years ago in Jesus name I release God's fire and his power renew now in Jesus name Rakisha healing is yours in the name of Jesus oh touching her right now Lord you raised Lazarus from the dead I call your brain back into restoration as it was before the accident. I declare God's healing 
I declare God's power over you now in Jesus' mighty name. I declare that nothing is impossible to those who believe. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I speak now. I speak now over your organs right now. I command that gallstone to dissolve in Jesus' name now. I command every spirit of infirmity attached to your body to leave on the count of three. One, two, three. Out now. Out of her now. Praise God. Praise God. I speak life and healing to that hernia right now. I command that hernia to go back where it was. In the name of Jesus. Because of his love for you. Because of his love for you. B, could you come here a minute? Could you come here, B? Hallelujah. I want you to hear a testimony. I want you, Yvette, to hear this testimony. Hallelujah. Come here, my friend. This is my beautiful friend. This is B. This is Yvette. B, you had a hernia in your stomach. Um, last week, did you? Yes. And we released the power of God over it, didn't we? Amen, yes. And where is it now? It's gone. Hallelujah. It's gone. It's gone. Yes. How long did you have it there, B? It's been there almost, uh, it's going on two and a half years. And could you see it? Yes. You could see it. It was right there, but now it's not there. Her stomach's completely flat. wasn't like um, movable, you know, it wasn't soft, it was hard, and now I, there's skin, and yeah, it's gone, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So once again, we just speak the word of God over your body, commanding God's healing power to the gallbladder, commanding the healing power of God to that hernia, be healed in Jesus' name, be made whole in Jesus' name, and God's fire upon you. Complete healing from that car accident and everything that has yes, held you Lord. back in Jesus' name. We just declare God's power over you now. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You. She didn't experience that, that hernia that was gone until she went home later on. It was a miracle. So we know God's going to work right now because we released his word of power over yes. you, Yvette. Praise God. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody else? Mama, do you have anything? Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can I pray for you? In Jesus' name, I just release God's power over you. The power of the Holy Spirit to make everything new. I speak the word of life over you now in Jesus' name. All spirits sent to bring you into a place of weakness or infirmity, I command them to go in Jesus' name. All spirits of infirmity that keep popping up, keep showing themselves, I command every single word curse, every single assignment against you to fall to the ground now and die in Jesus' name. Every spirit must leave now in Jesus' name. I speak life health, wholeness, and the fire of God into you right now. Be set free from everything that has harmed you and held you back. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, right, the anointing is destroyed the yoke that was hooked on. I saw like a yoke that like an ox wears that was on your shoulders that had tied you to things that you had nothing even to do with wasn't your fault you didn't bring them on you but they they were just attached to you and it was it was the enemy the lies of the enemy and the lord is dissolving that yoke because of the anointing and removing the burdens that that yoke brought so the yoke's destroyed being destroyed and the burdens are falling to the ground i declare lightness strength peace, energy, oh, yeah. vitality over yes. you in Jesus' name. A Thank life God. worth living in yes. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah
welcome. Praise God. He's hallelujah. God makes all things new. Anybody else want anything? Anybody else want a touch from the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on up here. I want to continue my healing to learn. So I want to renounce narcissists. I want to renounce anger. I want to continue renouncing uh, generation curses. I want to renounce poverty. Uh, I want to renounce uh, Jezebel spirit. I uh, want to renounce any sexual morality. I just want to renounce everything. I just want to give it all to the Lord. I just want to be emptied out where I can be used even more. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. So now in the name of Jesus, I just detach you from every single thing you just renounced. And I command every spirit attached to those things you renounced to leave you. On the count of three. One, two, three. Out now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Every spirit leaving you now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. I just want to pray for you, my brother. Hallelujah. 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 I just release to you the power of God in the anointing that continues to work in your life. That gives you that new mind, that new heart, that new mouth, that new belief that you are the beloved Son of God in whom is His greatest delight. Hallelujah. The anointing now is going to move in more power in your life than ever before. And you are going to fulfill every destined plan God has for your life. The enemy will have no more power to push you back. But instead you will push him back. By the anointing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And I hear the Lord say, it's never too late. He has a plan for you. It's not too late. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. He's so good. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody else? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. Oh, man, I have a long day, so I'm just going to say I read those the whole thing because they're all going to be here all day. What jumps up? the continued deliverance of your children. He never stops working. In Jesus' name, I detach you from what you just renounced. Every single one of those things, I detach you from them now. And I command every spirit attached to those things that is harmed, hurt, taken up any place in you, they no longer have a legal right. And in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, every spirit must lead now. One, two, three. Out of him now, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. And in the name of Jesus, I just break off of you every generational curse. All the things that came down and tried to come down through the bloodline. I break off of you all attachments to all those old ancient things. 
all that old lineage in Jesus' name. You are now in the bloodline and the lineage of Jesus Christ. And I command all of those old things to leave you now in Jesus' name. Go! Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He felt them go. Did you feel things leave? Yes. My heart, my left arm was getting really stiff. Now it feels good. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. God is moving. God is powerful. God is powerful. God is powerful. The enemy had a plan to take you out to wash you down the river, to bury you. And the Lord says, no, I pull you up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. I set your feet on a rock and I establish your steps. In the name of Jesus, you will fulfill your calling. You will fulfill your calling. The open heaven of grace is over you. You are God's son. You are God's beloved son. He takes great delight in you. He takes great delight in you. Favor is in your life. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, those who come to believe get to receive. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Jesus. I want to renounce any residue that I had in my body from my memories. Um, I also want to renounce any strong calls, any yolks attached to my past. And I want to receive more anointing because the anointing within feels miracles. God works miracles with others. I also want to renounce my judgmental mind sometimes. I also want to renounce Jesus, I detach from you every single thing that you renounced. I even detach from you ownership of illness, for it is not yours. It is sent from the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. I just detach from you all that you renounced right now. Count of three, I command every spirit connected to those things you renounced, all the residue, all the leftover, all the little roots that still are trying to hide inside. In Jesus' name, at the count of three, every single one must leave now. One, two, three, out. Somebody hold the Out in Jesus' name, every single one. I declare you free from every enslaving yoke, every bondage of the enemy, every spirit of infirmity, out now in Jesus' name.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Freedom is yours. Hallelujah. 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 I speak renewal to this shoulder. Out. Out. Spirit of infirmity. Name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is this daughter of God, the vessel of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in this temple. God dwells in this temple. The Lord dwells in this temple. This is a holy, holy temple. I cleanse you for the kingdom in Jesus' name. Out, the last one. Out! Out! right now. Jesus, my healing, my joy, my peace, my peace, right? Because he says, I give to you, but nothing the devil gives to us, do we have to keep. Nothing that the devil gives to us, do we have to claim as ours in Jesus' name. And this is just a way to close a door, because it's an open door to say, oh my, you know, my arthritis, or those are things that we just need to be trained kingdom we don't talk like that in the kingdom and God's training us all we're all in different levels of training for reigning hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus yes. praise God hallelujah. glory to God this is exciting yeah oh praise God 
Hallelujah. Lord, right now, I just thank you for every single one who came here today. Every single one of your children who are so beautiful, so beloved, so precious, so chosen, so special. You're royalty. You are royalty in Jesus. You are raised up with him. I break off of you now all spirits of confusion. I command every spirit of confusion to leave your minds now in Jesus' name. If you've had problems with thinking clearly, continue, having a continuity of thought, being able to even finish sentences and finish complete ideas and communicate, I break the power of that spirit of confusion now and I command it to leave in Jesus name yes. I break the power of all generational curses you, that were passed down to you that you had nothing even to do with the Santeria the witchcraft the new age Mary worship idol worship false gods false religions Satanism Psychic, palm reader, tarot cards, horoscope. I break the power of all of those things in your life right now and I come in. Every spirit, every spirit sits against you in that area to leave now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord told me right now that he's healing somebody who's, who's confessed they have dementia. Dementia is a spirit. Could you guys help her? Dementia is a spirit. I command the spirit of dementia to leave you now in Jesus' name. It will never come to your house. Amen. It will never, ever, ever come to your house. Amen. It will never come to your temple. Amen. Jesus doesn't have dementia, and neither do you, and you will never get it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I declare over you right now, God's healing power is moving in every part of your body that needs healing. I declare strength to your body. I declare life to you now in Jesus' name. I declare his perfect peace, shalom, wholeness, soundness, nothing missing, nothing broken. I declare life to you in Jesus' name. I declare freedom to you in Jesus' name. I call you a child of God. I call you filled with the Holy Ghost. I call you washed in the blood of Jesus. I call you raised with Jesus in newness of life. I restore in Jesus' name the joy of the Lord to you. The joy of the Lord to you now. I command all spirits of sorrow to leave you in Jesus' name. Sorrow, sighing, and grief go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Joy of the Lord to you right now. Wave after wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of joy. Joy to you. Unspeakable, full of glory joy. And I declare to you God's grace. The abundance of grace to you now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the opportunity of your life. Take this day. Seize this time. Take what you got today. Go back and watch it on Facebook. Watch it again on Instagram. Let your heart get happy. This is the true gospel. And it's here for us. It's here moving in us right now. Jesus is here right now. Revival is now. We're going to have more of these. We're going to have them about every four to six weeks right out here in the park. We're going to have them as often as God says. Because I believe that the Lord wants a pillar of glory in the city. Yes. It's going to radiate out. And watch, that whole university is going to become filled with revival fire. Look at that university. Hallelujah. There's going to be flames on all of those buildings of the holy fire of God. Glory to God and the devil's kingdom is torn down in That's Jesus' right. name. 
I speak life and wholeness and soundness over you now in Jesus' name. A couple of things. We have church um, uh, gathering at True Grace Church on Sundays at 10 a.m. Pastor Larry, my husband, will be teaching every Sunday. He walks in the office of a prophet. He will give you a prophetic word. He will release God's power to you. He walks in the op office of an apostle of grace. That was prophesied over him um, about 10 years ago. Amazing prophetic word. And then we have gatherings on Wednesday nights at True Grace Church. And I get to teach. That's in Redlands here. And it's at 630. We have a women's, a warring women's gathering on Friday nights at 6 p.m. And last night we went to 11 o'clock. We go four and five hours. The Spirit of God just moving, 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 moving. Powerful deliverance, healing. Oh, my goodness. Powerful healing. Powerful. Because God wants to equip us, right? Because we're going to go out. Psalm 68, 18 says, you know what? God called the warring, the warring people to go out and to conquer the conquering legions. Hallelujah. Everybody who's on board. Everybody who's on board. Everybody who wants to be part of this this remnant army, come on, come on and join us. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming out to the park. Thank you, those who have watched. Share this with people if you want to um, celebrate in in the ministry of True Grace Church. You can go to our website. You can sow seed into the ministry, TrueGraceChurch.com. We are grateful. We are blessed. We're not going anywhere. God has got us planted right here. And he's, got, he's going to move in your life in powerful ways. So next time, bring people out, people that you know need to get free. We love you guys. Have a beautiful day in Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah.